In the last three videos, we've been looking at the comparative method and how we can use regular sound change to establish relationships between languages. And we looked at a few examples of what sound change could look like. Here I want to show you more examples of what can happen to, th uh, to sounds over time. Here's a brief summary. It's basically everything we saw on the phonology week. Sounds can undergo phonological assimilation, for example, voicing of a consonant between two vowels. They can undergo lenition, where they become softer, like going from a stop to a fricative. You can add features, for example, the nasalization of French, as it, became, as it went from Latin to French. And you can even add or remove segments as uh, languages change. Let's start with assimilation. Again, same as in week three. Assimilation is a process where one segment can become more similar to another. M maybe they can just become the other one, like in Italian, nocte, becoming notte, where you had a K and a T, and then this K changes into another T, notte. So this T influenced the neighboring K into becoming another T, notte. Here we have maximus, greatest in Latin. We have a K and an S, but the final S influenced the K and made it another S. Massimo, greatest. So this is a simulation called contact assimilation because these two are touching one another. They're right next to one another. We can also have a simulation through a distance. For example, a simulation uh, from one onset to another. Here we have the Proto-Indo-European word for five, penque. In Latin, we have quinque for number five. What probably happened is that the onset of the second syllable, this qua, assimilated the onset of the first syllable and basically copied itself in there. So now that we, so now we have two quinque instead of the original p. So this will be a case of assimilation where one uh, phoneme influences another. We can also have partial assimilation where you only change one feature. For example, voicing. In Latin, you had words like lupum, patrem, acutum, with P, T, and K. These words were voiced, in these words, I'm sorry, these consonants became voiced as Latin transformed to Spanish. We have lo, padre, agudo, with the voiced equivalent of the voiceless ones here. So the voicing uh, feature changed. We can have place assimilation. For example, in Old Spanish, we had the word senda, which meant path. This is bilabial, and this is alveolar. But because uh, we have two different places, in modern Spanish, the first sound became the same place as the second one. Here we have an alveolar N with an alveolar D, senda. Makes it easier, makes you, means that you need to move your tongue a little bit less because it's already going to be in one place as opposed to moving uh, your articulation from bilabial to alveolar. You can also assimilate manner of articulation. Sabaki is the mother language of Swahili in Eastern Africa. The proto word for tree was probably something like muti. In many dialects of modern Swahili, it's mti with a t. However, in other dialects, like the one in Chifundi, it became mri. mri. This, uh, the t became a continuant, a sound where the uh, airflow keeps flowing, like the m. So, for example, you can keep saying an M, you can keep saying an R a little bit, but you cannot keep saying a T. It's full stop. So it changed from not being continuant to being continuant, where the airflow could fl uh, continue to flow. So assimilation makes sounds more similar. Dissimilation makes sounds different, probably to avoid you tripping on your tongue. For example, in Latin, we had arbor with two R's, but Spanish changed one of the R's, arbol, again, to make it a little bit easier to say. In Italian, we have colonello, colonel, and in Spanish, we have coronel, where one of the L's, the first one, was changed into an R. By the way, notice that English to the two is just not in the writing. It's written with an L, but it said coronel. So the simulation means that the sounds become different. Lenition is very interesting. Sounds become softer. What does that mean? For example, if you have a gem in it, which is two of the same sound, 
it becomes a simple version of the sound. Cupa, siku. Go to Spanish, copa, seco. You can have lenition where you go from stop to fricative. And again, because it becomes softer because of increased airflow. Like in Latin, faba, which is a bean, to Italian, fava. Old Japanese, pana, to modern Japanese, hana, flower. Where you go from a stop to a fricative. You can have the change go even further and go from a stop to an approximant. In Latin, you had the word catena, chain, which at least in my Spanish became cadena, cadena, with an approximate uh, lowered F. Here's some more kinds of lenition. For example, you can have a stop, go to a liquid, as in the flap in English, water, water. You can have a stop going to a glottal stop, which is uh, takes a shorter amount of time and makes uh, it's a little bit quieter. It's further back in the mouth. We uh, we have this in English, water, where in some dialects you would say wa with a glottal stop in the middle. And we already saw this in Proto-Polynesian, where we had Proto-Polynesian ika go to someone ia. So a full stop can go to a glottal stop, and we would consider this lenition. Finally, you can have voiceless uh, sounds becoming voiced, which again means uh, sort of an increase in more regular airflow. As in the example we already saw, catena, cadena. The opposite can also happen, but it's much less frequent. It's called fortition. For example, in Latin, there, uh, we have the words aqua, mayu, with a simple stop and an approximate. In Italian, these became a double stop, Aqua, a geminate, and a stop and an affricate, maggio, for me. proto chipchen was the mother language of Riri, of Kabekar, and of Malekul, which you might have seen in the midterm. In proto chipchen the words you and water were ba and di. These are voiced, and then they became voiceless in Malekul. So we have po and di. So voiced to voiceless, they fortified. Okay, what do we have so far? We have um, assimilation and lenition. Languages can change because features are added. This happened to French. In Latin, we have words like panem and lingua, with a vowel and an N for bread and tongue. In French, the N was lost, but not its nasality. People heard that there must have been something nasal in there, so they assigned the nasality feature to the vowel. So now we have pain and long for bread and tongue in French. They became nasalized. In English, we have palatalization, where the influence of a palatal assimilates an alveolar sound, like in ditcha, kutcha, woodcha, where now we almost never say did you uh, with a full alveolar stop. All right. So changes in... Um, Assimilation, lenition, changes in features. We can also add or remove segments. Languages can through their history. For example, one defining feature of Spanish is that it hates an S at the beginning of a word. It's not part of its phonotactics. So from the very beginning with words like scola to the 21st century with words like scanner, Spanish will always add an E at the beginning of those words. It, like in escuela, escaner. This one means scanner. Um, as you can see, this process is called epenthesis, where you add a segment. And it's because of the phonotactic requirements of Spanish. Deletion means that you delete a segment. In Sabaki, the mother language of Swahili, uh, we had the words fungula and condolo, unfold and sheep, which have become fungua and condo in modern Swahili. The L was deleted over time. This also happened in French. In Latin, uh, we have the words viridis and grossus for green and big. The D and the S were lost at the end of the word. So modern French has ver and gros. And notice that there are some instances in which you do preserve the final one, but it's you do preserve that consonant, but it's when the sound is not the final sound of the word, like in vert, which is feminine green, gros, which is feminine big. All right. 
Finally, there's other types of manipulations of segments, for example, metathesis, where segments change places. In Old English, the verb to ask was axion, with the K first. Metathesis is very unstable, so over time these segments go back and forth. In modern English, we have ask, but there's many speakers who also use ax. And I assure you, 500 years from now, it's probably going to be ax again, because metathesis keeps these segments changing. A very cool kind of change is called tonogenesis, which is how tones are born. For example, Old Chinese was not a tonal language. It had syllables that ended in consonants like a glottal stop, as in ta, earth. However, the, when you have a glottal stop, what you do, a glottal stop is a closure of the vocal cords. And in order to close the vocal cords, you need to rapidly accelerate them to a closure. This acceleration gives you a rise in pitch. And this rise in pitch was reinterpreted as a tone. So even if the uh, glottal was lost, people thought, oh, there should be some sort of rising pitch in there. And we made that into a tone that goes up, like in tu, modern Chinese, earth. On the other hand, the, a sound like s would not produce a rise in pitch, but a fall in pitch. The old Chinese word for use was something like longs. The s means that because it's a voiceless sound, your vocal cords shut down and slow down, and this brings the pitch down. But as the sound was, as the S was lost, people thought, oh, there should still be some sort of falling pitch in there, and created a falling tone, as in the modern Chinese, yong, yong. So you can see how the tones were born because the segment was lost, but the pitch effects of the segment were reinterpreted as tones. Vowels can do a lot of things. Vowels can go up and down. Like in English, uh, we had ham in Old English, which is a low vowel, but it became the mid and high vowel, home. They can diphthongize. Uh, Latin bonus became Spanish, bueno. They can monophthongize. Old French, eu, became modern French, e, them. So quite a few things can happen to the sounds of language. In the next video, we'll study how the meaning of words changes.